Hello, my friend. Um, welcome to Bible study with Dr. Chinedi. Uh, we're going to share briefly, really just probably um, one or two scriptures. Um, going to the book of Acts. Um, I guess I will title this, um, Don't Worry About Anything Else. Just don't worry about anything else. That's the title of this. Um, so, Acts chapter 1. Of course, uh, the book of Acts is, is thought to have been written by um, Luke. Um, this this book is basically the beginning of the church, at the birth of the church when Jesus ascends into heaven and gives us a great commission and says, um, wait, and I'm going to send you a helper. And then this is the birth of the church. From the book of Acts, you know, the whole, all the chapters just kind of, it's such an exciting book to read. Um, if you haven't gotten a chance to read the book of Acts, it's just a trail of things that were happening to the apostles and Jesus' disciples as we are his disciples. And it's just so exciting to read. But let me just start with verse 1, chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. <clears throat> it says, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost gave, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Verse four, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father, which said he, ye have heard of me. Verse five, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days Hence, I'll stop there. Keep going. So I, I said I was going to read one verse. I actually read five verses. So um, you just can't stop. But anyway, this book is basically talking about one thing that really I want to highlight. It's, it's actually in verse one. It says the former treaties. Uh, Luke was re, re, uh, writing this to Theophilus. <clears throat> and a book, of course, that translates, transcends to us as well. Um, he's saying these the former treaties have I made oath of all just trying to tell the story of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. That's what I want to highlight. Jesus began both to do and to teach. That really says it all to me. Uh, Jesus came not just to teach and yes to do, but he did both. He he, he began both to do and to teach. So it, in essence, you can't really teach what you're not doing. So this, this is also convicting. I'm like, okay, before you do anything, make sure you, before you preach on anything and teach on anything, make sure you're doing it. <laughs> That's, <laughs> it's called accountability. But anyway, but Jesus sets an example for all of us. Of course, he is the ultimate teacher. He is the master. He is God. And uh, we, Everything that we know that we should be doing should come from the master. And so here it begins to tell us the book of Acts as we're stepping into Easter um, holiday, Easter Sunday, taking a look at, you know, what happened? You know, we are how Jesus came. We know why Jesus came. Uh, not only does the Bible tell us the truth of God's word, but even history tells us what happened. You know, they can't find the body. So as we're talking about the resurrection Sunday coming up very soon. Uh, it is just important to talk about how, you know, just don't go to Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, to wear your beautiful outfits, but also to get the message. The message is that Jesus came, he came to die. He came to die for me and for you and to save us from eternity in hell. Yes, the hell is a, a, a literal place. Heaven is a literal place as well. Um, you can't have one without the other. But Jesus came and he fulfilled his mission, which is to deliver us from death, hell, and the grave. So 
having faith in him and him alone, Christ alone, by faith alone, we can have a new life, brand new life, made home, made whole on our way to heaven to spend eternity with God the Father. So as he was leaving, having accomplished this great accomplishment, he tells his disciples, listen, I'm going, right? He tells them he's going, but he's also going to send them help. He's not going to leave them alone. He's not going to forsake them. And by the way, a child of God, we're never, he's never, he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. So he tells them, wait, I'm going to send you another helper, the Holy Spirit. And this whole uh, beginning of the book of Acts, you, you're going to see Acts. Some people call it Acts of the Holy Ghost and some people call it Acts of the Apostles. I can be, I think it's all, all of the above. Um, so, but here, He's telling them to wait, that there's going to be a promise, a promise of another helper just like himself. The Holy Spirit, can you imagine the Holy Spirit of God living in you? Uh, that you have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead living in you the, by the, po the power called the Holy Spirit, the, per the third person of the Trinity. So this is so impactful, uh, starting to read the book of Acts, uh, how... Jesus, number one, he came, he fulfilled his mission, and he says, wait for a helper. And, and the promise of the Father, which you have heard, for John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost from many days hence. I'm reading from the KJV. Um, and we'll read a little bit more later, see how when the Holy Ghost showed up, what happened when the Holy Ghost shows up. Um, and I know people don't always say the Holy Ghost, but the Bible says the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, same person. Um, but anyway, um, but the highlight, one of the highlights I want to make is the first, the first verse where it says, Jesus began both to do and to teach. And I really believe this is very important in our lives and as an application that we are to be doing, not just hearers only of the word, but doers of the word, because it's not going to profit us anything. Um, as the saying goes you can't really teach anyone what you have not experienced yourself i mean you can only go so far but you can't teach someone show someone what you don't know yourself so in essence this is telling me that we are to be doing the thing we are to be reading the word but to be applying the word even before we teach others we have to make sure that we have also done it ourselves like um you know the bible says how do you want to remove the uh, the being in your brother's eyes when you have a love in your own eyes. So Jesus sets us an example by he's already doing it, both doing and then teaching. So it's called living a life of integrity. Whereas, you know, in our world today, there's integrity has been thrown out the door. Uh, what you, what your outside is not necessarily what you're on the inside, what you, uh, your outward, you know, platform is not necessarily what you're, what you behind the scenes. So, but I think that God is calling us to a life of integrity of, to be who we are, no matter where we are. So I think that, um, that's something I want to encourage us to do, uh, not only to teach, but to do. And so it is important that we live a life of an example following after what Jesus has done, uh, what Jesus has shown us to do. So, and then if you go down, breaking down just this particular scripture, that's the first thing I wanted to highlight. The second thing is that God is telling them to wait for the promise of the Father and that they have heard of him and that how they're going to receive the Holy Ghost. And then we're going to read a little bit further with why. But I think it's important that we wait. When Jesus, when God tells us to wait on something, wait. Because there is a reason. Uh, he sees, <laughs> he sees everything. He knows. If God tells you to do something, just do it. You know, we may not understand it all. We may not see it all. But God sees and he knows all. So he says them to wait for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Because that, the Holy Ghost is going to be instrumental in all the, the, the rest of the things that happen. So, but when we don't have that Holy, if they did not wait for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, um, I, I don't think that we would be reading this, I, I don't, but you know, it, it's an, it was necessary. So sometimes God asks us to wait, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. There are things that are going on in our lives and things that we don't understand, we don't see, but God just said, wait on the Lord, wait, don't move ahead. Don't, don't lag behind, but certainly don't move ahead because there is a reason God sees the future. He sees the past. He knows the present. He sees the future. He's omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. He sees, he knows all. 
when he says wait, just wait. I know it is easier said than done, but it's still the truth. It is still the truth. And sometimes when we get impatient, we mess things up. And God now have to retract things. Oh, I was recently, I recently, I recently had an experience where um, <laughs> I didn't wait or um, rushed into something and regretted it, obviously. So um, this just this just reminds me that we need to wait on the Lord. Don't rush the process. There are some things that they just have to cook. They just have to simmer. They have to get the savor. They have to get. They have to be the way God. God, when He takes His time, it may look like He's not doing anything, but He is doing something behind the scenes. He's always on time. So let Him cook. Let Him let Him make do all those things behind the scenes that only God does that we don't understand. Uh, don't be impatient. Wait on the Lord because there is a reason. There is purpose in the waiting. And I, when I say wait on the Lord, I don't mean do nothing. I mean be listening, be in tune to his voice. If he says take one step, take one step. If he says take two steps, take two steps. If he, if he says don't take any step, don't take any step. So waiting on the Lord, be in tune to his voice and be committed to being obedient. And I'm talking to all of us, to myself so a couple of things that we want to do, I don't want to read any further because I can get carried away, but this very first uh, five verses, number one, is that we ought to emulate the master teacher, Jesus. Jesus was always not only doing, but teaching. So we ought to not only do, teach, but I think we teach more than we do. God is telling us not just be hearers of the word or just saying it, but we ought to do the word so that we can reap the benefits. And then number two thing I want to, I want us to take away is the fact that we need to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord in another uh, Psalm, be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Um, so because God has a reason why he has told you to wait here, we are told the disciples, they were told to wait on the Holy Spirit because that is eventually now going to give them power to do the work. If they didn't wait, they would not have power to do the work. As we talk about all the things that happened in the book of Acts that we'll talk about a little bit later. But for now, uh, let's heed the word of the Lord and go back and read Acts chapter 1. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about it further. And uh, for now, God bless you. Take care. Be encouraged uh, to not only teach, do and teach and also wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer. He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. All right. Till next time. Bye-bye.